Hey guys, Daniel here. Welcome back to the Stuff of Legend. I wanted to talk to you guys about something a little bit different today. We're going to be talking about Marvel Ultimate Alliance on the Nintendo Switch. Ultimate Alliance is one of my favorite games of all time. Being able to play as pretty much any of the major characters in Marvel and a lot of lesser known characters that not a lot of people knew about. It was one of the first times that we got to see Moon Knight. It was one of the first times that we got to play as Black Panther and Silver Surfer. There was a number of characters that had not gotten a lot of attention as far as video games were concerned or TV. And we got to finally get to play as those characters and get to really know them. There was trivia, there was a lot of storyline and depth behind the gameplay. It was great, it was wonderful, and it has always been known as one of my top three favorite games of all time. That being said, it's been a very long time since there has been a sequel to Marvel Ultimate Alliance. And now we're starting to get Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. It's very crazy news because it's coming out exclusively on the Nintendo Switch, Nintendo platform exclusively, and this is one of the first times recently that we're starting to see Wolverine come back to the video games on major platforms because the Fox-Disney merger is about to close. That's about to come to its end. And we're going to finally start to see the Fox characters entering back into the Marvel Universe. And Once Upon a Deadpool alluded to that. It started to talk about how Fox is being bought by Marvel and this is something, or by Disney rather, and then Disney is going to hand those rights over to Marvel so they can use them. Bob Iger has been very specific about how he wants all of the Marvel properties under one roof. And that's one of the reasons they've been pushing for Deadpool to push into the PG-13 format. It's unlikely that he's going to get his own movies from now on, but we will probably start to see him appear a lot more in the Marvel films and TV universes, just in a PG-13 more censored way. He'll still be there for all the action, and if you got a chance to go out and see Once Upon a Deadpool, you already know what I'm talking about. It was fantastic. It was really fun. It was enjoyable. Of course, they had to cut out some of the other material that was, say, more gory, um, a lot more bloody. They cut out those things, but left a lot of the action sequences. The meat of the story is there, and there was tons and tons of laughs. All the laughs were there, just in a in a much more family-oriented, you know, there was a lot of adult humor in there, but it was much more subtle, less on the nose, and it was very enjoyable. That being said, the Marvel Ultimate Alliance trailer is starting to prove that Fox is no longer being ostracized by Marvel in the comics. The X-Men are now taking the forefront again, whereas the Inhumans had been pushed on the fans for so long because there was that dissonance where Marvel wanted to make money with X-Men, but X-Men was Fox, and Fox didn't want to play with Marvel as far as the movies. They wanted to do their own versions of the stories, which is fine. Most of us greatly enjoy the films that were Brian Singer's universe. However, to get a much more comic book accurate storytelling, I think we're going to have to put that back into the hands of Marvel. Just the same way that Fox trusted Marvel with Deadpool allowing there to be a collaboration event to create Deadpool in a rated R setting. Once Upon a Deadpool shows that you can have that spirit, but in a family-friendly setting. And I think that we're going to see him kind of serve as more of a cameo um, artist in the same way that the Hulk has been. Where Hulk was in all of the major Marvel events, except for Civil War. It allows him to be a major player in the Avengers team-ups, but he doesn't have his own film. And a lot of people have been wanting more of that. But at the same time, we still got a lot of him in Thor Ragnarok, and he can still serve his purpose in the team, in the universe, without having his own film. And I think that's something we'll probably see a lot more of Deadpool. Do you want, you know, Fox maybe to give him a trilogy treatment where they they give him one final rated R film and then have him serve as the cameo guy? I think that could also be a very viable option. Bob Iger would still make a lot of money in that direction, but they they do know that they can make quite a bit more money by having him in the PG-13 audience where there is a multitude more in the realm of sheer numbers of customers that would go out to see these films. That being said, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 covers a lot of the film characters that we've seen, the Guardians of the Galaxy, everyone that was in Civil War, and then it does something else in addition to that. It adds in a very specific moment in the trailer where you get Wolverine, and it specifically highlights Wolverine as a playable character, shows some of his awesome combos, shows him taking down bad guys, but then it shows the X-Mansion as well. So the X-Mansion gets some attention, and then it shows Sentinels as villains in the video. So there's a lot of X-Men attention here. It doesn't show any other mutants aside from Scarlet Witch, who is an Avengers property as well. 
So they can already get away with that. But to show that Wolverine is now part of this project and the X-Mansion specifically, as well as the Sentinels, those are Fox exclusive. So that right there shows that Marvel is making a huge push back into the realm of the X-Men. The Inhumans are a part of the game, but I think we're starting to see that they're trying to grow this universe and get everything back under one roof. Even though this isn't a movie, it's not cinematic, they did boycott the X-Men from Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. And that was a huge ordeal because that was the very first Marvel vs. Capcom without X-Men characters being represented. This is a huge turning point showing that there is no need for that sort of strong arm blackmail business tactics to get them to work together. And this is good news because now it's all under one house, the mouse house, and we're gonna start to see more Fox property stuff, I believe, especially in Marvel Ultimate Alliance. I believe a lot of the unlockable characters will be X-Men and Fantastic Four. In addition to that, we're gonna start to see a lot more films and teaser trailers and cameos from X-Men characters in the MCU, whether they're rebooted, recast, or if it's the same crew um, that we're seeing right now with X-Men First Class, X-Men Days of Future Past, X-Men Apocalypse, and now Dark Phoenix. So let me know down in the comments if you guys are as excited about this as I am, if you guys think that I'm correct in my assessment of the situation, and also, are you guys excited for Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3? I do not have a Nintendo Switch as of yet, but I do plan to get one eventually, and I will be playing that game. That is one of my favorite game franchises of all time. I'm very excited for that. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend. We do it as a team. I shall be waiting here for you. Hey guys, D-Lo here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And remember to share this video with all of your nerd friends. I know you got them, and you know who they are. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought about this discussion. Let me know what you would like to see me do a video on next. Subscribe to the channel because you're a legend and we have that in common. Also be sure to turn on notifications to be notified right away when I upload my next video or so that you can be alerted when I go live next time. That way you'll never miss a thing. Check out the other videos on the channel so that we can have a discussion on all your favorite movies and TV topics. Thanks again for watching. Stay tuned for more right here on The Stuff of Legend.